Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. Okay, the villains are trying to take down a hero. And in the process, they are trying to take down our hopes, our aspirations, and our values. Your hopes, aspirations, and values, and mine. They are trying to steal from your spirit and mine. Now, what the hell am I talking about? The attempt to take down Elon Musk. Why is Musk what the New York Times' Kara Swisher calls one of Silicon Valley's complicated gods? A god on a par with Steve Jobs? Why will he be a god to your kids, your grandkids, and to mine? Why will kids a hundred years from now be inspired by him? We'll get to that in a minute. But first, a bit of background. The man who parents are supposed to hold their kids up to, as an example, is the man in the White House, the president. And what values does the current president represent? Lying? Destroying? Making promises to build wondrous things? Things like a 21st century infrastructure for America? And a health insurance system that we will, he swears, love, love, love? Then building nothing. Not to mention name-calling. A form of disrespect that goes beyond disrespect calling Mexicans murderers and rapists, and calling his opponents Little Marco, Lying Ted, and Criminal Hillary, dehumanizing his opponents and demonizing them, while he himself is the real liar, and in all probability, the real criminal. Are lying and dehumanizing the values that you want your kids and grandkids to imitate? says the Bible, without a vision, a nation shall perish. Right now, we Americans suffer from a vision deficit. The Chinese are building a new Silk Road, a $1.5 trillion project that will link 66 countries and 4.4 billion people. There is no similar grand vision in our White House. But America does have a compelling vision. It does have at least one figure who embodies the values that you and I want to teach to our kids, the values of freedom of speech, tolerance, pluralism, American ingenuity, and American workmanship. That man is Elon Musk. If you saw the two boosters of Elon Musk's Falcon Heavy land in perfect synchrony in February, and it looked to you so perfect that it seemed to be an animation, you saw a miracle, a material miracle, and that miracle's producer is Elon Musk. Ten years ago, Musk had never gotten anything off the ground, and people mocked him for it. Today, Musk has sent 50 rockets to space. That's more than most nations. Musk wants to take us to Mars in cruise ship luxury, 100 of us at a time, and I am certain he will do it. But in the last two weeks, the villains have tried to take him down. Short sellers are people who make their money in the stock market by betting that a stock will go down. And short sellers have bet that the stock of one of Elon's companies, Tesla Motors, would dive. They bought Tesla stock when it was peaking, when it was high. Then the short sellers have tried to crash that stock. How? By mounting a hashtag Musk meltdown campaign, by spreading the rumor that Musk is losing it, and the short sellers campaign to smear Elon Musk and to nosedive his Tesla stock has worked. The New York Times has published seven Elon Musk articles in the last two weeks, articles hinting that Musk is taking too much Ambien to go to sleep at night, is possibly taking LSD, maybe smoking pot, and is the kind of leader that any responsible board of directors must replace. Spreading that rumor has paid off for the short sellers. They've tanked the stock by 9% and made a billion dollars shorting Tesla stock. Then there's the SMIC, the Space Military Industrial Complex, 
which hates Elon's price-cutting competition. Competition with rockets that do things that, that Elon Musk's rockets, or that SMIC rockets, cannot accomplish. Landing on their tails so they can be reused. Reused so that the cost of access to space can go down, down, down. The SMIC has the most powerful lobbying and PR apparatus that I have ever seen. If it jumps into the attempted Musk takedown, all hell could break loose. Look, Elon Musk is operating under severe stress. He's working 120 hour weeks and sleeping in one of his Tesla factories for up to four nights in a row. The attack of the short sellers has been torturing for him. He's admitted that this has been one of the most difficult years of his entire life. But the New York Times veteran technology writer, Kara Swisher, who has known Musk for 20 years, asks if he's really gone over the edge, and answers, absolutely not. And she compares the current agony of Elon Musk to the plight of Steve Jobs of Apple. Jobs was one of the two co-founders of Apple. He was the man who drove the company forward. But he was tossed out in a corporate coup and a new, more corporate CEO was brought in. That CEO was John Scully, and John Scully tanked the company. Finally, Jobs was brought back in. He gave us the iPod and the iPhone and changed the very nature of our daily lives. And he made Apple one of the two most valuable companies on the face of the earth. Steve Jobs made his stockholders holders a fortune. Now the villains are after Elon Musk. But we need Musk even more than we needed Steve Jobs. Again, because the projection of American values that should be coming from the White House is absent. Our most crucial values, truth, pluralism, free speech, and ingenuity are all under attack from the man who is supposed to be leading us, the man in the White House. The only person with a vision bigger than China's New Silk Road is Elon Musk. We cannot afford to see the villains succeed. We cannot afford to lose Elon Musk. This is Howard Bloom speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make. Or, want to know why? Ask how. And now, for that insidious appalling, even more difficult to find than usual, little off button. Bear with me. Aha! I've got it!